relations with um, Jews. So this should precede um, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the Muslim conquest of Mecca. Um, Jews in Arabia, although not in large numbers, were a significant minority and they were held in great respect by the pagans, idol worshippers of uh, Arabia. Why? Because they were believed to be the possessors of scripture, uh, written book, divine book. And the Jews um, called the pagan Arabs Ummis. Ummi means uh, unlettered ones. But technically it means those uh, who do not possess a scripture. So possessing scripture uh, gave Jews a certain status which the uh, common ordinary idol worshippers of Arabia did not have. Um, it is said that there was hope on the side of both Jews and Muslims that with the scripture of the Quran being given to Muhammad, uh, Jews would accept Islam. Uh, that did not happen. And in the year 622 when Muslims uh, went to Medina, a certain issue arose and that's known as the Qibla issue. Now the word Qibla means direction of prayer. So the direction in which you face to perform your prayer. Muslims all over the world face uh, uh, the Qibla of uh, the Kaaba. So the Kaaba in Mecca, you have to face that and that's the Qibla. What happened was that, and this is a principle in Islamic law. Islamic law says that in all those cases in which a clear and explicit guidance is not provided by Islamic sources, Muslims can follow uh, the Sharia or code of law of the previous nations by which is meant Jews and Christians. Now, for many years, Muslims had started to pray, but the direction of Qibla had not been given. And so Muslims used to pray facing Jerusalem where the Temple of Solomon, of course, was. So the city of the prophets. When Muslims moved to Mecca, uh, an important question arose. Let me, um, you'll have a very bad opinion of my artistic skills after this demonstration, but please bear with me. So we have Mecca here, and we have Medina in the north. In Mecca, you have the Kaaba. Okay, and in Medina, sorry, see, in the north, you have that north of Medina, also, that is to say, Temple of Solomon. Before the direction of uh, the Qibla was given, Muhammad used to face both the Kaaba and the temple. You see, his, uh, he used to face the temple because that's the city of the Prophet, that's where the temple was. So, he used to stand here and pray to the temple, but the Kaaba was involved also, although an explicit direction for the Kaaba as Qibla was not given yet. Okay, when Muslims moved to Medina, over here, it was no longer possible for Muhammad to face both Qiblas. Right? And Muhammad used to look up to the heavens and the Quran attests to that. The Quran as Muhammad's biography. The Quran says, we have been watching you. God speaking. I'm just representing God. <laughs> we have been watching you, Muhammad, um, raising your um, eyes to the heavens uh, because Gabriel used to descend from the heavens. In other words, uh, Muhammad was expecting a revelation that would change the Qibla now that the Muslim community has established itself as an independent community and has moved over to Medina, and it's no longer possible for him and his followers to face both Qiblas. So the Quran says, we have been watching you, Muhammad, uh, looking up to the heavens, 
and now we will redirect you and command you to face the Qibla of the Kaaba. So from that time onward, um, Muslims changed their Qibla and this revelation came as uh, Muslims were praying and Muhammad, right in the midst of that prayer, switched around as he was play, praying toward the temple, switched around and faced um, the Kaaba. He was in Medina at that time. And there's a mosque that is known as the Mosque of Two Qiblas. That is, Muslims started praying, that, uh, performing that prayer, facing uh, uh, this, this way, and then in the midst of the prayer, they switched around and faced the Kaaba. This then established the Muslims as a community in its own right, distinct from uh, the Jewish community. There was actually a Quraysh Jewish axis during uh, the Meccan period itself. Um, since Muhammad claimed to be the recipient of revelation, the Quran, in the making now, and this was a scripture which technically put Muslims on a par with Jews who had scripture, the Quraysh, the Ummis, unlettered ones, the Arabs, the pagans, idol worshippers, they did not have any. Um, the Quraysh used to consult with the Jewish people. Here's a guy, Muhammad, who claims to have scripture. You have scripture. How should, we, how, should we, how should we deal with him? And the Jews would suggest a few questions that the Quraysh might ask of Muhammad. For example, they asked the question, um, what took Jews to Egypt? In response, the story of Joseph and Jacob was told, and that is chapter 12 in the Quran. So uh, if, if you read the background literature on this, uh, this was a question that was suggested to the Quraysh by the Jews. Oh, he claimed to be a prophet of God? Ask him this question. Ask him that question. Test them. Test him on the basis of uh, uh, scripture. So this was uh, the Quraysh Jewish axis. And during, uh, um, when, when the Quraysh attacked Medina on a number of occasions, uh, the Jews of Medina um, gave support to the invading uh, Quraysh. Uh, for which they were dealt uh, quite harshly. Uh, some were exiled. In some cases, uh, uh, the men were killed and the women and uh, children were enslaved. And this decision was given by a former uh, Jewish person who had converted to Islam and the Jews of that tribe said, let that person decide uh, our fate on this occasion, hoping that a former Jew would decide in their favor. But he decided on, his, on the basis of his knowledge and understanding of uh, Jewish law and Jewish precedent. And he uh, gave this verdict, which was then implemented. So this is how uh, Muslims, uh, Muslim-Jewish relations went in. In Medina, I should also add that a small number of uh, Jewish people did convert to Islam also. And a few of them uh, became great scholars. They are quoted to this day on many issues. And Muslim commentaries coming from early times, they give them great respect. And they, uh, because of their knowledge of the Torah and the scriptures, uh, their views and opinions are quoted with uh, great respect. And they, they, their uh, commentary is considered uh, valid, or the, the, the views that they give.